Hey everyone, Lewis, aka Spider-Man 991 here with the fifth episode of my new series, Writer's Block, where I review the certain issues of a comic book series that have been written by a certain creator. And today I will be talking about Daredevil by Frank Miller. Now, I am doing something a little different for this episode because I am including two two books featuring Daredevil by Frank Miller that aren't really part of the actual uh on ongoing arc, so to speak. Uh, they weren't part of the ongoing series. They were written a couple, a couple of years apart, uh, but I include them because, to be honest, they serve as really good bookends to Frank Miller's run. You've got Daredevil the Man Without Fear, which is sort of like year one for Daredevil, and you've got Daredevil Born Again, which is also kind of an epilogue to the series, uh, to the Frank Miller run, which is really, which is also, I think, one of my favorite Daredevil stories of all time. Without further ado, let's get into the, let's go into Hell's Kitchen, talk about the man without fear, and and start with the bullet points. All right, now bullet points is just basically a little uh, sort of small description about what happened during this run uh, d that made it so important. Okay, so I said there were two stories that were the bookends. First off is Man Without Fear, because which I described as Year One for Daredevil, and it really is because. A lot of the characters featured in Year One do play a role in Miller's ongoing wor Miller's work on the ongoing Daredevil title, and <clears throat> it sh basically shows us how S Matt Murdock met met his mentor Stick and how he trained him after Murdock lost his sight. Um, also, how Matt met met Electra while he was in college, and Matt's first time in costume going against the crime of the New York City in New York City, and it does set up. Wilson Fisk's reign as the Kingpin. Also, Man Without Fear does feature the black costume, which if you, which was seen in the first Daredevil series on Netflix. There isn't really so much an, a major ongoing story with Frank Miller's run. I mean, to be honest, I think of Miller's run as more of a character development uh, for not just Daredevil, but also other characters that were featured in Daredevil, but now really more tied to this particular franchise. Uh, for example, Wilson Fisk. Uh, prior to this, he was primarily a Spider-Man villain, and once, and and at the beginning of Miller's run, he was out of the country, and he apparently kept files on the people he had replaced him because he retired to be with his wife Vanessa, who wanted him to give up crime. And now Kingpin, now Fisk is suddenly brought back into the into the New York City crime life when. He, when the, his former lieutenants kidnapped his wife, and they pretty much and they pretty much barter try to get the information Fisk has on them in exchange for Vanessa's wife. Unfortunately, plan goes awry. Vanessa is believed to be dead, so Wilson Wilson takes his revenge and begins a new reign as the Kingpin. Also, another <clears throat> character that was really moved up into Daredevil's rogues was Bullseye. Now, yeah, Bullseye. He's there. I would say in this run, he pretty much became. Daredevil's second arch enemy. I mean, Kingpin, yeah, he's number one, but Bullseye, really close second. After one of their previous battles, Bullseye had developed a brain tumor, and it got so bad that he started to see Daredevil, he started to believe that anyone around him was Daredevil, and he went on a killing spree. And Daredevil has a moment in this encounter to, to basic, after he's beaten him, he has a moment to just leave him on a train track and let him get crushed by a train. But Matt, but Daredevil doesn't do it. And after Bullseye escapes from prison again, he goes and finds the Kingpin and wants to be his top level level enforcer. Unfortunately, that position is filled by Elektra. So Bullseye goes and kills Elektra. You probably know this by now. He kills Elektra. Matt goes. Matt gets angry, very angry. And this time though, he does beat Bullseye, but he does not kill him. I mean, he does. I mean, it is pretty br brutal. He basically throws Bullseye. Out of a window that shatters his spine and causes him to be in a vegetative state. Now, I did mention Electra. That has to be Frank Miller's biggest contribution to the Daredevil mythology. Electra was Matt Murdock's co old college flame. They were deeply in love. Unfortunately, the death of her father prompted her to take a mu much darker turn. Electra's vision that there could be peace and order in the world was shattered, so she decided to become come an assassin. Eventually, at first she was trained by Stick, but 
Stick eventually turned her away because she had too much darkness in her soul, so to speak. So eventually she worked with the Hand, then she broke free. Later the Hand found out where she was and went after her, but ultimately she died died with Bullseye. The Hand seeked to revive her so that they could use her again as their as one of their top assassins. Matt, Stick, <coughs> Black Widow, and St and Stick's other uh, apprentices, apprentices tried to stop tried to prevent the resurrection. Electra did, however, while during the ritual, Matt briefly touched Electra's body, and somehow that allowed, and somehow that affected the ritual differently. Electra came back to life, but she wasn't working for the Hand. I mentioned that, and that's basically where, and after one more confrontation with Bullseye, even and when I say confrontation, I mean Daredevil goes to see him just to phase, just to go see, just to go see him and have a conversation about why he didn't kill him. Kill him. That's basically where Miller's run ends on the ongoing Daredevil title. Years later, he would return once again to write one more story arc for Daredevil called Born Again. And in Born Again, the Kingpin finds out Daredevil is Matt Murdock. And so the Kingpin decides to destroy all aspects of Matt Murdock's life. He doesn't just go after Matt's loved ones. He goes after everything. He gets him disbarred, gets his assets frozen. frozen. Essentially, Leaves him a broken man. He tries to break Murdoch so much, but you know what? Matt just gets up and keeps on going because he is, despite all, how much Jack Murdoch wanted his boy to study and avoid fighting, Matt's got the soul of a fighter, and he and whatever Kingpin threw at him, he just got right back him, got right back up and hit twice as hard. I would boil Frank Miller's run down to on Daredevil. Okay, what do I like about Frank Miller's run? Well, almost everything people love about Daredevil, the things we see in the movies, the Netflix series, all of those things came from Frank Miller's run. Kingpin as his arch enemy, Bullseye being his main, his other arch enemy, and Elektra. Those all came from, Dare, from Miller's Daredevil. Also, originally Frank Miller did want, uh, once a lot, Electra's resurrection happened. She was never meant to appear again. In fact, actually, she was never meant to appear past her first appearance, but fan fans loved her and Marvel wanted to see her again. And Miller did have a deal want and did say that he had a deal with Marvel that after he brought her back, after being killed, that she was never to be used again. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Sorry, Frank. Now, the relationship of da Daredevil and Electra is something that I do like because... You can see if they do love each other, there is passion, but it is always doomed. It's doomed. They are on opposite sides of the spectra. spectrum. Matt, he's, even though he's a vigilante, he still believes in law and order. Electra, she's an assassin. She does not think that there is any good, and that honestly, the only way, way to take out the bad guys is to be just as dirty sometimes. And you know, you can also see that Matt and Electra do have a very strong bond. I mean, it's not... Just oh, they knew each other. They were young lovers. No, it does go deep because, like I said, like I said, Electra's soul was not pure purified until Matt laid his hands on her during her resurrection, and which, due to aspects of energy and manipulating and stuff, stuff. But anyways, they had a very strong bond that allowed her to see the light. I do love the way Miller wrote the relationship between Daredevil and Bullseye because it feels exactly like. Batman and the Joker. That is the obvious comparison I have for it. Because Bullseye, he kills people, like a lot of people. And Daredevil thinks to himself, like, he could end, he could just leave him here to die. He thinks he could just kill him easily. But he doesn't. He doesn't. He lets him live because he knows that's the difference between them. And that final issue I mentioned, I think that's probably my favorite issue of the entire run because he goes and sees D Bullseye in the hospital. And he's telling him a story about how there was a kid who wanted to be Daredevil, and his dad what, and his dad seemed tried to get him out of the fantasy, but his dad was being blackmailed at the time. Uh, anyways, he's telling Bullseye this story the whole time. He's playing Russian roulette with Bullseye, and when it comes down to the the final chamber and the gun, Matt says to him, says that you know what the real difference between you and I, you and me is Bullseye. I don't have any bullets in my gun. Oh. I mean, just the way that work, just the way that relationship is, it's brilliant. Also, uh, on, on the second to last issue in the run, 
The only reason Matt Daredevil found out where the hand's base was was because he had to get the he had to make a deal with Wilson Fisk. And Fisk even admits at the end that he and Matt no, I mean he and Daredevil. He doesn't know he's Matt yet. He admits that he and Daredevil very much do need each other. It's kind of like, and it's not like Bullseye and Daredevil where, you know, one can't kill the other. But like for Kingpin and, Will and Daredevil, they both represent some sort of, they have a weird yin and yang relationship in a way. One can't exist without the other, so to speak. Also, I like the way Frank Miller added martial arts and the hand to the Daredevil series. Because prior to this, Daredevil was only being published twice a month. When Miller started writing it, suddenly it was popular, and I can see it. There was so... I mean, I like the addition of the martial arts, the creation of the hand ninjas, Elektra. All of that really added a lot more depth to the Darede Daredevil character. He became more than just a blind guy with ra radar sense. I mean, they really... I mean, Miller went all out, adding depth. Also, adding some great villains, too, which was fair... Which I think... all, Which, you know, you can't have a good hero without some good villains. That's something I believe... I think, and, you know, he added that, and I think that was a good good move on his part. So, that's why, I, honestly, that's why I love Frank Miller's run on Daredevil. All right, now you're now you're probably asking yourself, where can I get all these issues, uh, everything I just, about everything I just mentioned? Well, you can get them all in, well, good news is there's two ways you can get. There's the Omnibus Way, which collects all of the Daredevil issues in one, in one volume. And all the other stuff, Man Without Fear, Born Again, uh, a couple of other pro Daredevil works that Miller wrote, and somewhere he just did the art. Those are collected in Omnibus Companion. But you, but you can also get all of that in trade paperback form. Man Without Fear and Born Again have their own trade paperbacks, but everything else you can get in just three pa Ultimate Paperback volumes, which I think is way more cost-effective because... Well, first of all, before I started the show, I already owned these, so that was a lot easier, easier on my wallet. But they are, but basically all three Frank Mil Daredevil by Frank Miller volumes are in are in just three trade paperbacks, as well as the other two two bookend story arcs I mentioned, which you really should check out. Check out once you read the ongo, either before or after you read the ongoing stuff, or during. Actually, it's really <clears throat> it's really fun to read it with Man Without Fear, all the ongoing work, then Born Again. So, so yeah, that's it for the fifth episode of Writer's Block. We are now halfway through the season, through the first season. I really would like to do this again. So, if you guys have any any recommendations, let me know in the comments below. I'm already start starting to think of which comics I should include include on the second season when I start getting the chance. Uh, let me know again. Let me know. Let me know how, what you think of this series. I really would like to make more of it. Also, stay tuned for next week's episode where, well, we're not going to be out of Hell's Kitchen just yet. So, thanks again for watching. I'm Spider-Man991 saying see you later.